Good morning, and thank you for joining How Retailers Are Capitalizing on the $68 Billion Live Streaming Opportunity with Adi Ronan, CEO and co-founder of BuyWith, and David McDonald, Managing Director at Publicis Commerce. As a reminder, if you have any questions during the conversation, to please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Now here's your host, Deborah Weinswick, CEO and founder of Corsair Research. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am live from Las Vegas at uh, ICSC. So lots of talk here, actually, with uh, a lot of the mall reads and actually the retailers around live streaming. So a phenomenal time to have this conversation. Uh, Addie and David, thank you so much for joining us and uh, really kind of carrying the torch on this industry that I'm so passionate about. So let's get things started. Uh, for the audience, Addie, can you run through what the live streaming landscape looks like? And what are the different kinds of commerce platforms that are out there right now? Yeah, definitely. Happy to be here. So as we see the landscape, we see two main groups of uh, companies. So one is the B2B companies, a uh, white label. You take a technology as an e-commerce site, brand or retailer, and you put it on your uh, native uh, platform and then you could get your own experience of uh, live shopping on top of your website. Uh, the other group that we see is uh, mobile apps of um, live shopping. So uh, B2C apps that actually created uh, platforms for end users to interact uh, with each other uh, on mobile app. Um, we uh, try to combine the B2B aspect with a, a content creator uh, angle. So we created this marketplace that enables our clients actually to scale uh, their live stream shopping activity on top of the website, but leverage our community of uh, vetted content creators. And I remember the first time we spoke, and I think we had you know six of the folks from Course Site on, and you literally like walked us through how to kind of live stream right then and there. On the, it was literally like a defining moment for me and somebody who's been very passionate about live streaming that it was, you know, there was something with BioWith that was very different and unique and it helped really simplify what I think to my, many is like a complicated industry. Can you just talk about, right? I think and like maybe help the, help bring to life for the audience, right? This kind of this, this quickness, this kind of ease. And also I think from a, an expense standpoint, because a lot of people think it's very expensive, you know, how is BioWith different? Yes, uh, so we actually created a frictionless platform that enables um, brands and retailers to go live without any code integration or with just one line of code. So it's very simple for brands and retailers to just start, try live shopping, optimize it. And uh, so this is one thing. Uh, the other thing is for the host. So they can join the live session directly from their phone like this. We don't need to have a studio or cameras. So it's very scalable for them uh, to join very easy. And also for end users, they just click on a link and they can join the real-time session. So again, they don't need to download any app to their phone. Um, yeah, so I think that the, this part of the, the platform, the frictionless is very important for us. And the other part that is unique is our um, experience. So uh, we literally last month got a patent about our screen sharing technology that, yeah, it's uh, very new, that it enables the host of the session to actually take the viewers to a live journey on the website. So we also have a full screen video like everyone else, but we are the only one with an ex the shop with me experience that enables this influencer or the brand reps from the brand to actually navigate on the site in real time and move from product to product and give a authentic recommendations in real time. And David, can you talk, thank you, Eddie. That was, like I said, I still remember that. Like it was, it was such a defining moment for me, that call that we had. Uh, David, how did you get familiar with the live streaming industry and where do you think we are in that journey as it relates to kind of retailers and brands? Well, I think it's a great question. I think we got, for me, got excited about live streaming a few years ago. And then I think like everyone else since 2020, it kind of exploded. Um, but I think it's always kind of the idea of 
live commerce has been there for quite a while. Even in the U.S., we usually hear that the, the, the Western world were a little behind. But when we had shopping TV, um, so we had a live street, live commerce for a while. But we see now the way that technology is enhanced how easy it is to integrate uh, live commerce into your DTC uh, if you have it. And then also how you can kind of take it and, and use it across both your own channels and paid channels. So I'm gonna ask you a difficult question, but you know, that's, that's, that's what I get to do. <laughs> and I've actually had the question asked more at this conference than I ever have is, right, didn't we have in the US, didn't we already have live streaming, right? We had QVC, we had HSN. Why isn't that live streaming? Well, I would say it's it's it's, it's similar, um, but it's it's a always on twenty four hours. It's a TV channel. We're live commerce. We're taking it into very specific pieces, and it's it's time frame. Um, also, I think it's I can take it on the go wherever I am. I can buy a rate from the live commerce where the TV QVC is a little different. That I still had to make a phone call. It wasn't as you know combustible to be able to buy right there. I think the way we look at it now, the funnels collapsed in e -com. Live commerce allows me to be that engagement and make the purchase there. It could be anywhere, to be honest. Um, so it's that kind of creative commerce explosion that we have, purchasing anywhere, anything, at any time. That's the live commerce, that, that piece of it to be able to shop. And I think as Eddie talked about on the, the, the buy with, they can actually shop with you. So it's this kind of uh, little bit of not just uh, an event. It's it can be used in multiple aspects of products. No, that's great. And Addy, I think you know, David brought up something very important, this idea of like shopping with you. One of the things that we've seen that's very unique in the U.S. is this idea that you know the, the consumer almost needs like this democratization of like the concierge. And so this, this whole idea that you know I, I do need one-on-one -on -one service, whether it's, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, success in like, athletic footwear and apparel, right? Like a sale where the consumer has, right? Like I'm a runner, you know, I have a high arch, right? I have a white toe box, this type of idea around, I need to really have somebody kind of walk through with me what I'm buying, how I'm buying it. A lot of it's to me around reducing return rates. You know, we're astronomical fourth quarter this year, the high on record, but also this idea, you know, with help not only on one to many but one to one yes i don't know if it was uh, my internet to yours but i think uh, i got pretty much the question uh, it was about the difference between the one to many the one to one and i would add a bit about uh, what you said about the uh, authenticity and tips and value that uh, the user can get uh, through the live so we see that the best uh, live sessions are uh, where the user really get authentic recommendations about uh, what to purchase, that it's not too salesy. You can really get a uh, valuable information about the items and about the items that fit your needs. That's why uh, we see very low uh, return rate as well. We actually saw one of our clients just uh, three, only 3% 3 return rate of items. So uh, it was really great to see it. And uh, for the one too many, so yes, you, you are with a group of people. There is a lot of, you know, social dynamic and like emojis flying and stickers and something that is very fun and uh, it's combined with entertainment. Uh, and for the one to one, you really get the opportunity to get a personalized advice about your own needs. So also in the one to many, you get the opportunity to ask questions and sometimes say uh, you get the answer if, if either from the brand reps in the chat or the host. But for the one to one, it's really, as we see it, the fits to specific verticals like uh, luxury, like electronics and beauty as well, that the end user really need like the help from this uh, expert, the brand's expert. And what do you see growing right now? And what do you think, right? Because the, the U.S. live streaming market or live commerce market or social commerce market is much different than China. Where do you see the growth now with what kinds of retailers, brands? Maybe if you can talk about it from a retailer brand perspective and from a consumer perspective. And 
how is it different than what you expected? Yeah, I think that the, is it for me or for David? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I think that, the, um, you know, in China, we see like the, this 24 seven culture for live shopping. Uh, what we are trying to do at Biowiz is really um, optimize with our clients the best hour, the best day to go live. So people would be available. And I think it's a bit like a culture thing. And so this is a, one thing that we see and we re- really try to optimize the, everything to, to generate the best results for our clients. And so it's like the hours of the day. And also I think that, um, you know, the fact that um, we see in China these like huge, huge influencers that bring, you know, tons of uh, audience. So uh, we are also working with a lot of micro influencers that actually have their own like a small communities. And then you have like sessions that maybe they're not like huge, but they're very, very uh, engaging and the conversion can be also uh, very high. So uh, we see also this like micro influencer uh, trend in the live commerce space. Yeah. And maybe just to, to add from the retail perspective, so we see retailers that are actually um, enabled, enabling their like brands uh, to do the live sessions on top of their like retail platform. So if you're uh, selling on Ulta, for instance, and you are a brand, you could do sessions on Ulta Beauty uh, for your brand. So this is another like uh, trend that we're seeing right now. That's great. And I, you know, we're sharing the results of the poll that everybody took. And I do think it's interesting in terms of where we're seeing utilization of live streaming shopping as a sales channel, about three quarters, 73%, honestly, higher than I would have expected, but that's fantastic. And then I do think it's interesting because I think there had been the de facto expectation that, you know, social media would be the, the channel of choice, but, you know, for many reasons i think that's part of what has made this industry channel uh grow at a slower pace than we would have expected a core site and instead what we're seeing is this idea around a, a dedicated live streaming platform at almost kind of 40 percent of you so i do think that the you know kind of what's interesting on the you know retailer and brand side is it's just kind of much more about how you know how people are approaching this how they're finding it and, and the results and the success that they've had. David, I wanna kind of take what Addie was talking about in terms of, right, like who actually is doing the, the streaming? You know, we've always recommended co-hosts, certainly somebody from like the, the brand or the retailer to make it more authentic. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if you can do that with a micro-influencer or with a KOL or, you know, kind of an, a, 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 let's say an influencer has a larger platform, that's great also. What have you seen in terms of what's successful and what surprised you? So I think there's a, I would answer it in a couple of different ways because it depends on what you're, how you're using live commerce, how you're, how you bring it in. If it's a, an event or versus a more intimate one-to-one shopping. So when you have an event, you, you want to have somebody that is engaging, that understands the product, that is trustworthy, that can sell. That could be a micro-influencer. We tend to see micro-influencers have more of a conversion than than the macro-influencers. The other thing is, you you think about it, when you're in a display, uh, you see somebody selling within a store, they know how to engage with the audience. So you want somebody that can be able to not only get the product, but engaging with the audience to draw them out, which allows you to to make the conversion. You can see that events happening. The other angle is sometimes it could be a a boutique company that may only have five or six products. They want to actually build a a community and build trust. So it's a lot of times you'll see actually the co-founders of those of those companies get involved and do the live streaming because it's really part, they own the brand and it's really about them. Um, on the other angle, this is where it does dif- depend on your situation. If it is a client telling like more of a one-to-one piece and it's, you, you tend to have 
sometimes sales associates do really well. You think about those sales associates, especially in loyal uh, in the luxury goods that may have a relationship, long-term relationship with their clients. They can actually start to do the live commerce with them to replace the, hey, come in, let me tell you what I found in the store. Let's actually just walk through it. But they need to know their customer at that point. And it's generally a personalized experience. But it depends, as I said, on where you are in the, the, the program you want to run with it. No, that's, a, that's an excellent point. I mean, I, I think that we've seen certainly having, you know, depending on what it is that is actually kind of, you know, the, the product or the brand, that may also resonate. But we have been very much against more of just from an ROI perspective on spending too much money yeah. on your, because that can really, you know, I think that that had an old idea. And I don't know if you saw this as well, right? That had to kind of go out and you had to pay like millions of dollars to have this host. And so there was no way, right, that any of these were going to have the ROI that, that they right. should. Is there, there was so much focus around the host as opposed to enough focus around the product, how you were describing it, right, how you were showing it. And, and I think that, you know, and Addie, I don't know, like what kind of training or how do you, at Biowith, how do you help kind of hosts and KOLs and influencers understand how to sell in this channel? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, we have a couple of team members in our influencer uh, and creators team that actually train the host and make them like the best host for live shopping. Because we saw that not every influencer can be good or not every person can be good in hosting live shopping events. And a lot of times also uh, you want them to bring traffic to the live. So they need to know how to bring traffic outside of their social media uh, to the live event and to, and to bring like sign ups and registrations. So uh, we train them both in the like promotional side, how to promote the live. And then we train them um, how, uh, about how to host the live itself, uh, how to explain about like the platform, how to encourage people, to add items to the cart, uh, to show the items in the video, some like tips that they have, and they could then um, easily implement to to create a successful live session. And I think that um, what we saw the reason actually that we started to create this community was that we saw that sometimes and a lot of times actually the brand selected the wrong host, and we saw okay we have a lot of like know how around uh, which metrics the influencer should have in order to be a good one. Uh, and then we build a community around this, like, uh, this. Is... That's really helpful. You know, as we look forward, how do you think live streaming kind of plays out for holiday this year? Yeah, so I can start with the, we're already starting to have some conversations around that. So definitely um, holidays is like, is huge for live shopping. We see even for, even you know, for the Mother's Day and every, every opportunity that you could create. Uh, I'll explain. You need to, like, when you do a live session, you want to create content around it, right? It needs to be around a theme, around something that drive and attract people to come to the live and create, you know, it's like a show. So you need to have a content, a concept. So uh, the holidays are very attractive to create like uh, a content around. So uh, it's really, yeah, it's really great. And, uh, David, and what's I, your holiday season? And sorry. I can be back to school through, you know, kind of uh, the end of the year. Yeah, I think we're... I mean, for where we see the excitement of live streaming in the holiday is that look, people still want to engage with people. They want to see somebody. They want to have a, have a relationship. And live streaming gives you a bit of that. It's not like I'm standing at looking at a, a blank image or I'm not just seeing a video that was done. It gives me that interaction to allow to see the products. I think where we also will see live streaming can can help out in the, in the live streaming platforms is the metrics that you can do it, you will know right away that if your message is working, I don't have to create an ad and run it out and then wait to see how my ad is playing. With the events, you're getting that live data. So you're knowing what's working with your customers. And I think as we get into the holiday season, as we are with the 
you know, economic um, conversations we're having, how do you get more with less? Um, and live streaming, we'll, we should provide you that, that platform to do that. Yeah, no, I yeah. want to ask, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and uh, we will do our best to, to get to them. As David mentioned, this whole more with less, I mean, one of the big things that, you know, and, and as I think I, we're, we're not in this kind of 24 seven, you know, shopping culture in the U.S. And so many of the like, like draws and sweepstakes and whatnot, right, that will not, you know, necessarily kind of work uh, for, you know, the, the consumer here, right? It's not like if, you, if you're on for eight hours, you know, we'll, we'll give you this kind of giveaway. What are you seeing in terms of how, you know, how consumers react to different giveaways? What is it that, you know, kind of ultimately matters from the consumer perspective? And Addie, what kind of, you know, gets them over the line? Yeah, so uh, we see that uh, once the brand or the retailer, they give like a discount or some kind of a giveaway or a prize or something, it really helps uh, bring people to the live. And they also feel like we're unique, that they came and now they get something. They're like in a group of like a VIP thing. It makes them feel special. And so I think that it's really important to like incentivize them. And we have now some like features that we implemented that actually uh, people can invite more people to the live and then they get a discount. Some like uh, incentives uh, that we are using during the live itself, or if you get to a certain number of people in the live, everyone gets like a discount. So uh, we try to tie the, the giveaways and what they get to the live session itself and what's happening in it. Um, but I think it's important because uh, it's part of the experience, in my opinion. They come, they want to get uh, something. And David, are you seeing, you know, we, we've definitely heard, I think that, you know, things have gone really kind of right guardrail to guardrail almost. You know, we had talked to some companies who are building out their own studios and in the U.S. And I'm not sure if they're you know, kind of all of those companies are still moving ahead. Uh, can you talk about the landscape, whether it's the uh, live, you know, kind of let's say maybe some of the, these companies where we would have expected them to have more of a, a live experience and they're moving in the other direction. Maybe talk a little bit about, you know, those companies who had started in a live streaming and who, or social commerce and are moving in a different direction. Does that concern you about the industry or is it that there's companies like buy with that are just right They're They're purpose built for live streaming They're You know, and that's kind of the direction we're heading. What do you think is happening from a landscape perspective, David? Cause we're getting that question almost every day. Yeah. And I think we, you know, we give an example of buy with and, and the platforms that are coming up, allow it to, we saw, and we saw, I think you're right. We saw some large retailers building out studios almost like they were going to do production TV. Um, but what we actually see with live commerce, it doesn't need to be production TV. It needs to just meet what your customers want um, and, and be in context. So I think the, where we start to see a shift, we start to see platforms that can come on that it can integrate easily. So I'm not spending a lot, excuse me, <laughs> spending a lot of time doing it integrations or having a lot of tech debt, how can I get this on board quickly? And I think this is where we talk about the platforms. I also think uh, you touched on it a bit with the social commerce. I actually think that we, we look at live streaming being different than social commerce because social commerce is you're putting out the social media. You don't really know if your customers are there or not. Where I see a live streaming and live commerce being engaged with your customers, being part of the journey. So being more connected to your brand. Um, and so being connected to your brand could be quick and snappy. It may be a little bit more production ready, ready, but I don't think you need to be building out a studio to start to see the benefits of this. I think there's, there's a lot of, uh, platforms you can utilize to get going, um, and integrate it into your ecosystem. Great. Um, Addy, one of the questions from the audience is kind of how do consumers find these lives, right? If there's like you know, one hour here, if there's one hour there, if they're on different platforms, how is the consumer, right? Is it hosted, right? Is the, you know, kind of information hosted on the brand's own website is the, how is the brand or the retailer alerting consumers about the lives? How are they driving audience? Yes. So there are like uh, several ways uh, to do that. 
And as I think of an end user, you could find the lab in, in different places. First of all, there is a social media. So um, creators and the brand are promoting the, the session in social media to invite their followers to sign up to the live. So this is one uh, place to, to find it. Another place is the actual website of the brand or the retailer. So um, for instance, we have um, on several uh, clients' uh, websites, a VOD page where you could see all the upcoming sessions and also watch the past sessions that already happened. But there you could sign up to many live sessions that are upcoming. And this is another uh, way to explore and discover them. Uh, another way and something pretty cool that we uh, developed and works amazing is a pop-up. So we have an automatic pop-up uh, that is triggered by our platform. So every time there is a session, if it's right now or an upcoming session tonight, uh, there is a pop-up that calls people to sign up or join now to the live session. Also, another way to promote a, a live session is using um, newsletters. So our clients are sending newsletters to their audience about the live sessions. And also with the, it brings a lot of people to sign up. And I know, Annie, you guys have done a lot with Ulta. Can you talk about just like how that relationship was formed? You know, any kind of use cases or, or success that they're seeing? And once again, for, for Ulta specifically, how are consumers, you know, how are you driving awareness about the actual lives? Yes, so uh, we, with Ulta, we um, started the partnership uh, a few months ago. Uh, we started it, then recently we expanded it. And I can't say too much in this forum uh, without them, but I can say that they, they are working on a lot of like good stuff that they, we should look for. Thanks. And maybe just kind of, if you can give us a, an example with a brand name or not, right, kind of where, where were they, not sales, but like where was the company from a, you know, just kind of just from the perspective of what is this, what can it accomplish, where are we, and, you know, maybe some of the clients you've worked with for the longest period of time or the longest duration, and, and where are they now, right? Like, how has the company itself changed over time? I think that's, that would be helpful for the audience. Yeah, definitely. So I can give another example of a client that uh, we are working with for a while and we are optimizing their uh, revenue per session. So they really do hard work with our like influencer team and our customer success team to create, um, you know, to generate and grow uh, the revenue per session, even the revenue per user. So we are uh, measuring the revenue per user and we're doing a really, really strong optimization work if it's in like features and the influencers and everything around the live to create the best results. So this is a, one example. Another example that we saw is actually of a luxury secondhand a website that is using our technology and they're generating a lot, a lot of money through the platform. And they... They don't have huge sessions. It's more like VIP sessions with like their clients, they even inviting them by WhatsApp or like calling them to, to invite them to the session. But they have an actual community of people that are coming to buy very expensive luxury items secondhand. And it, in the live, it's very easy for them because they're saying, okay, we will dis decrease the, the, the price of this item for the live. So they're doing like an auction almost uh, during the live. It's very interesting to see this use case as well. That's great. All right. Last question for both of you. And uh, there's still a lot from the audience, but we'll, we'll have to answer them at, a, at another time. Uh, so everyone, we will get back and answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. David, what advice do you have to brands and retailers that have not yet started? Uh, I think they should probably, I mean, we touched on at the top, there's about a $68 billion opportunity that we see coming out there in live commerce. And I also think uh, the where you need to look at it is how can you use your live, live streaming outside of just live streaming? I, I, so when you start thinking about it, it is, oh, okay, are, are, are we going to see the return? Well, some of the strategies you do is go with a partner that allows you to see that data, but also then create snippets. So you will know 
what parts of that make sense and resonates with your customers so that you can create snippets. And that becomes, whether it's you know video on demand or whether that becomes part of your media strategy, you're not going to kind of, you're, you're more or less knowing the storyline that makes sense. So going with a partner that allows you to do live commerce and then taking that and then pushing it, some of it out into your media aspects. Addy, of course they should use by with, but what other <laughs> do, you, do you have? And uh, kind of how should, how should brands retailers think about getting started? Yes, so I think that it's a lot about selecting the right partner if it's by with or different company, but really select a partner that help you to navigate in this new channel. Because for a lot of brands and retailers, it, it's a really new thing that they're trying. And once you have really the team that help you to navigate and to do the right decisions, if it's in the promotion or the host or many stuff that we talked about uh, during this webinar, I think it's a crucial part, not to just, because you need to do some work of optimization there. And, you know, we had a couple of like a brands that went live and from the first session, it was like incredible. But uh, in a lot of times, you need to, to also uh, give it the time of the optimization and find the right uh, way to do it with your audience. Find the right host for you. Find the right time in the day, etc. So I think that also to, to understand that live commerce is like part of the marketing strategy. It's not a one-off. Okay, I have a holiday something. I just want to do it one for the holiday. But to uh, implement it as a, um, a strategy for your organization. Because this is a channel that can generate not only um, conversions, but conversions and user acquisition and brand awareness. There are many value around it. So uh, this is my tip, Jordan. So I, I'm going to share my own because as everyone knows, this is an industry I'm incredibly passionate about, especially being here in Las Vegas for ICFE, uh, which is the largest retail real estate show in the world. And so what we're seeing is, right, this idea of how do you kind of merge online and offline? If you think about live streaming, it really is the kind of bringing to life of your e-commerce. And as Addy pointed out, I mean, the numbers are as low as 3%. We usually see about a 50% reduction in returns. And what we also see is this idea that, you know, it's an event, it's entertainment. And so we, of course, are partnering with actually many of the mall rates to kind of bring live streaming, right, into the centers into the stores and then you're creating events and you're driving awareness and there is this excitement around shopping uh, we've hosted this will be our fourth year our 1010 live shopping festival and it's unbelievable each year how we see greater amounts of commerce kind of going through this day through this event and really driving awareness there are many different types of platforms i think what you know what i've really enjoyed getting to know addy and david is that you know addy platform is right you can literally do it i mean this is and you know unfortunately i'm in a not great wi-fi environment this whole thing has been on my phone which i've never done but like it's been so easy right and so this idea that i can be in a store i can be in my apartment i can be in my hotel room where i am right now right that i can literally go live and i can educate an audience make a better decision about a product that they will love and that there may be some entertainment around that that is really the kind of the pure essence and I think lastly, what's really important here is it's this opportunity to provide a career path for your sales associates, right? This idea of like professionalization of the sales associate. And I think right now, today, right, there, there are many opportunities that, that we want to provide. And this is a very easy one for brands and retailers to, you know, kind of reward sales associates to kind of give them something to kind of look forward to as they progress in their careers. And I really think that we are going to see this as, you know, the future of commerce definitely coming on slower than what we saw in China. And I think, you know, some of it not being this kind of 24 seven shopping culture, but being something that, you know, kind of resonates with consumers with brands with retailers and Addie and David, thanks for, for being the torch bearers as well, because I, I do think that we are going to see a, a real change this year in terms of growth and trajectory. And uh, for all of you who are still with us, you know, Addie, David, myself, we're all here as resources and uh, happy to have conversations. Addy, David, I want to thank you for today. Thanks for bearing with me with my phone and everything. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we can't wait to hear, you know, kind of all your success and what the holiday season looks like for both of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.